into training after a, after a 7-1? <laughs> Not too many. I don't think many managers would have done. But, um, you know, it, it leaves you with a, a nice weekend, that's for sure. You know, you read all the papers, you, you go out and buy them all, and if you've lost by any amount, 1-0, 7-1, you don't look at anything or buy anything. But um, And it's nice to you know, get the lads in uh, yesterday and today uh, to talk to them about why they won 7-1 and um, how our tactics worked, um, our philosophy, they can, they'll start seeing it. You know, when you, when you get a game like that, the boys start seeing exactly what uh, you're trying to put across to them. And once they start seeing it, hopefully then uh, you can keep going and, and move on. You're not going to beat, you're going to beat everyone 7-1 every week, but at the same time, um, the boys did put in a, a performance that de demoralised the opposition. You can have three or four of those in a season. The, perhaps the important thing is, though, to get the narrow wins that accumulate the points. Yeah, you're right. But we've done that, haven't we? You know, we're one point away from Forest Green, and only two or three weeks away, we're nine points away from them. You know, so um, and there are teams that are on a little bit of a uh, a downer. You know, I don't think Forest Green have won for a little while. Wrexham haven't won in a couple. You know, these are teams that are going to be competition to you and um, and we seem to be able to bounce back pretty quickly from, from a, a defeat and against the, the teams that are pretty much at the top we've done alright against we've just had a couple of blips by the odd goal against Altrincham and, and Macclesfield who are, who are both in the lower ends of the table so that's something we have to we have to look at but no we've come in very very bright and uh, very positive and um and we, we look forward to Tuesday's game. And the, the season's already nearly a third over. Mm. Was, was Saturday to some degree about the fact that you've got a, quite a small group, really, and there has been a consistency of selection? Uh, yeah, there has been a consistency, and that's been important. And you touch wood, because when you've got a small group, you, you hope that certainly none of your key players get injured. Um, we've had Harry Pearl suspended uh, for a game, We've had uh, George McLennan suspended for the three games for his sending off. So, um, but we haven't had that major injury that's put somebody out for any length of time. So, uh, Downsy had a slight problem and he was 60-40 whether, whether he could play or not. But he wasn't really, he was always 90-10 because he was going to play whatever happened. And, and as it turned out, the physio got him sorted out nice and quickly and... Uh, with his Downs' his mentality, he, he, uh, he played and was one of our top players. So, touch wood, clean bill of health for Tuesday? Uh, yeah, we've definitely got a clean bill of health uh, for Tuesday. Um, and, you know, we, we've got the three boys come off the bench. I always use my, my bench if I can. And uh, they all played a part and, and, and made, a, made a difference. So, I've got 14, still 15 with Rowie who didn't come on. Uh, 15 to choose from um, as a selection headache because at the moment they're all desperate to play. Really a headache after a 7-1? I mean, can you change it after that? Well, you know, listen, you always tell the players it's a headache to make them feel that you're thinking about them. <laughs> but uh, I have changed it after a win. Sometimes you do because when you're playing Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday um, and there's not a lot between the whole squad then yeah, you can, you can change it. And uh, I'm certainly not going to put my team out there just yet anyway. So uh, no, there's, there's still a couple that got a bit of a chance. So Tranmere to Halifax, that was a midweek without a game. You now go into a sequence of five games in 15 days, of which that was the first one. Mm. You couldn't have started a run like that, a busy run with Gateshead away, Bromley away in there, with a better result than that. No, uh, it was a... A fine time, a good time to, to get a good result against the team with all due respect that everyone was expecting it to get a result against and, and that's where the, that sort of pressure comes and the boys have come through that that pressure um, every manager says you take each game as it comes and really that's what you have to do and I've looked at the fixtures um, and I've looked to see whether our squad will cope with that amount of games in a short space of time but then you've got I think November and December, where there's only four league games, but you then get into the FA Cups and you start getting into the FA Trophies and we're going to be one of the favourites for the FA Trophy, so people will expect us to stay in that. 
and the board had demanded that we uh, we get a big game in the FA Cup. <laughs> um, so uh, I don't I don't think they mind, and uh, they probably even want to run in the Gloucester Cup. I don't know, but uh, anyway, uh, every game we go into, we got to try and win anyway. Um, so you say that you say you've looked at the squad and will it cope? Does that mean you might be asking for an extra resource or two? Well, you never get a better opportunity than after a 7-1 win. So um, I've certainly uh, you know, set a bit of time aside to have a chat with the board and, and let them know um, what I think we might need and, uh, and whether, we can, whether we can bring it in. And you know, If they say no, then there'll be no bad adverse publicity. I won't be spitting my dummy out. Um, and if they say yes, then, then great. It's because uh, we've got the budget to do it. I think with everything, you know, the board have to, you know, they're obviously very pleased with the results, but they've always got to look at the the attendance at games, and you can't keep bringing players in if your attendance isn't really going up. And you know, you're hoping that at some point we will be able to, you know, drag another 500 people off the streets, and then we could get ourselves a real strong um, squad from now till the end of the season. Now. How we get then 500 people in, I don't know. We're second in the league. We've only lost one at home. We're scoring goals. We're one of the top goal scorers. We've, we're one of the teams that have let in the least. So it's not as though we've not done our part. Whenever I talk about people that are not supporting us, you have to talk about the people that are. And we've had good support from our 2-2, two, two, whatever it is, um, probably 1,700 or so home fans and certainly fans that go away. And they've done us proud and done us credit. So, uh, you know, if they can handcuff themselves to somebody else and drag them to the next few games, then I might be able to bring in a reinforcements. I know you highlighted Halifax's potential defensive weaknesses before the weekend, which has proved to be right. What about Braintree's defence? Because they've had a very strong start, particularly away. There's no defensive weaknesses in them, certainly not away from home. Um, and they've got a super away record. And they're, they're strong. They're they're a good team. You know they're on the back of coming up. They they they're confident. Um, they seem to travel well. I mean, you know, Braintree's right over the east side of England, and they have to keep travelling all the time. So they've they've done that well. Credit to them. I don't know how they get off work. Some of them must still work. I don't know. Do they? They're not full time, are they? Yeah, no. I don't think so. Anyway, but uh, they're certainly performing like a full time team, and they'll see going into the playoffs or moving into the playoffs, which they would if they beat us, um, as, a, as a major part of their history, let alone uh, their season. But two players called Marks and Sparks, does that indicate quality? <laughs> oh, uh, oh, is that advertising? <laughs> You're not allowed to do that on the BBC. <laughs> uh, yeah, the and all the chains are available. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and all the other quality chains that are around, yeah. Um, clever. <laughs> um, Danny Conway, new manager at this level, come up from Concord Rangers, would not be a man who'd be known at this level, but he seems to have adapted and pulled together a squad that's got a real unity about it. I suppose you have to when you're in, you know, I mean, we it's not a little village out, out in Essex. It's, you know, it's uh, quite, you know, I used to travel that way when I was going to Ipswich games and I spent a bit of time in Colchester and etc. etc. when I lived in Newmarket. So uh, I, I, Braintree were in the same division as I was in when I was the Newmarket Town player manager for a little while. And uh, so they've, they've done fantastic. And for a small club um, that started with small beginnings, they've done magnificent to get where they are. And uh, they will see themselves now as uh, very, very close to... Uh, a football league club and uh, I'm sure they'll be putting every energy they can while they're up there to, uh, to to do that So your message to the supporters who come on Tuesday night would be hey look at the table they, they're decent No they are decent and uh, listen the proper supporters the football supporters they understand they know, um, you know they want their side to win but you, you're just not going to win every game every week Um and if we get a good result against Braintree, it's because we've we've not rested on our laurels. We've not um, sort of sat back and said, "Well, these are just a part-time team sort of thing." Because we we know those teams when they get the towels up uh, can can be dangerous. 
dangerous being the operative word. They've got you know, three or four dangerous players. Um, now I'm not I'm not sort of setting us up for a defeat. All I'm saying is I want to keep the lads' feet on the ground because you only get results like we've had over the weeks by them believing in themselves, but by them putting in the work rate and respecting the opposition, and uh, that's what we'll do. Is the carrot of top spot gonna gonna drive that a bit more because you can go top with Forest Green not yeah, playing to Wednesday? I know, yeah, um, I think so. I don't think we'll be in here saying, "Look, come on, we we're going to be top because it's a bit early." You mm. want to do that in March, sort of thing, but um, it's a bit early to drag them to the top. You got to say, you know, we have got to keep picking up the points as we are. We have got to keep having runs of uh, victories if we can, and we got to try and. The first thing is you got to stabilise a playoff place while you're competing for that top place. And then once teams start dropping away over the months, um, then come Christmas time, you want to be there or thereabouts, that's for sure, so that you're then competing with the top five or six clubs, knowing that whatever happens, you're going to be in the playoffs unless you have a disaster. Um, but then at least you're, you're fighting for that top spot. Now, if we get there Tuesday, all well and good, it's because we've had we've got three points uh, for a win and, and, and that's what we, we're really aiming for. A lot of the first ten games of the season, there was there was a wait and see until ten games is up. But since then, the 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 the, the message from you has, has been a lot about top spot and promotion. Mm. Is that something that you're not afraid to talk about? Because no, I'm never afraid to talk about it. Because if if you've got a team that's brief is to win the league, then there's no you can't cover it up in any way. You know you. Can't sort of say, well, this is our first year. We will consolidate because that's not the brief. The brief is we, you know, the club's got to go up, and we got to do all we can um, to do that. So, you know, the, the boys are under no illusions, and uh, the good thing is, after 10, 10 games, they start to get a confidence in themselves, in their teammates, in their management team, in everything. They get that confidence in. Yeah, we're going to war here, and I agree with with our plans and, and our tactics. And um, as I say, we've, we've got a few that have been there and done it. So some of the younger lads can hold on to them, you know, when it, we, we get into trouble sort of thing. And um, at the moment, there's a real good spirit amongst them, but it's not a fun spirit. It is that as well. But it's a real uh, wanting to do well for themselves and for each other. So... We have got that teammates you can rely on right now. Cheers. No problem. Is that all right? Yeah. Probably.